live from the boat. Way to go, Carla. <laughs> Jesus rode on a boat. Uh, it's 1059. There are still uh, a, a few people signing on. I'll, I'll probably ended up repeating some of these announcements uh, at the end, but just a reminder that we will be together the next couple of weeks for sure here again on Facebook Live and to thank you for joining us. We we really appreciate it. We, I, I and the whole church understands that, that these are certainly difficult times and we're trying to be as creative as we can, reaching out, sharing um, the good news and, and inviting you to join together as a community to come together and share your thoughts and prayers uh, with one another. You know, I've said it before, but uh, the little chat box over, it's on my lower left-hand corner. We usually encourage people not to talk during church, but this is a time for you to be able to visit with your neighbor, say hi, uh, check in, let us know who we ought to be praying for, and and we can use that time wisely. Uh, at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Weston and Transfiguration Episcopal Church in Buchanan, West Virginia, we continue to um, wait uh, until we feel like we can gather in safety. We miss not being together under our own roofs. Uh, we miss not being together in the beauty of our churches. Uh, we miss the contact with the beauty and sacredness and goodness of one another. We cherish those times and, and look forward to the times when we'll be able to do it again. But right now, we just don't feel like we can do that safely, and this is the best that we can do. I A lot of people, some people at least, have asked me, uh, how's your collection going? Well, obviously our collection's down. You know, we're not able to meet in person, and uh, but we still continue to have expenses. And you've asked, how can you support our mission and ministry? And I have typed in the addresses of both churches if you'd like to make a donation uh, whatever that might be, it would be certainly greatly appreciated. I really hesitate to talk about money, but uh, you've asked for it, and, and there it is. There's the information, and we could really use your help. Um, today is the seventh Sunday of Pentecost, uh, seventh Sunday after Pentecost, and we begin by praying, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask. You know our ignorance in asking. So have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This is a reading from Matthew's Gospel. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of God is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. Now when the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? Ah, an enemy did this, he replied. So the servants asked him, 
do you want us to go out and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you're pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, and then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Have you ever noticed, I'm sure you have, have you ever noticed how folks, some folks are just determined to divide the world into two kinds of people? Mark Twain was famous for saying, there are basically two types of people in the world. People who accomplish things and people who, who talk about accomplishing things. The first group, Twain said, is less crowded. Ouch, Mr. Twain. James Thorpe says there are basically two types of people in the world. Those who love to talk and those who have to listen. Joy Mills opined, there are basically two types of people in the world, the takers and the givers. The takers generally eat well, and the givers are able to sleep at night. Dear Abby once wrote, there are basically two types of people in the world. Those who walk into a room and say, there you are. And those who walk into a room and say, here I am. Peter Benchley once wrote, there are basically two types of people in the world. Those who say there are basically two types of people in the world and those who don't. In the gospel that we just heard from Matthew's gospel, Jesus is talking to those who are convinced that there are basically two types of people in the world, the wheat and the weeds, the good and the bad the righteous and the evil, and those people who believe that there are basically two types of people in the world, believe with all their hearts that not only are they the wheat, the good, the righteous, but they also believe with all their heart that they know who the weeds are. They knew who the bad people are. They know who the evildoers are. And they believe with all their heart that it is their duty, their God-given obligation and mission in life to rid the world of the weeds. And to this, Jesus says, no, 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 no. Jesus is unequivocal in, in negating this. And for us, that's really good news for a few reasons. The first reason is because we know, we know that there are not basically two types of people in the world. Rather, there are two types of people that dwell inside each one of us. None of us are pure, unadulterated saints. And none of us are pure, unadulterated sinners. 
but most of us have a lot of things that we do really well. We try as best we can to live lives of faithfulness and goodness. But if we're honest, we also know that there are times when we mess up. Sometimes when the weeds creep in. Sometimes when we fail and sin. And the good news is that God, the patient farmer, patiently waits for us to do better. And I think the second bit of good news in this gospel that we just heard is it is a waste of time, effort, and energy sitting around worrying about who's good and who's bad. Because when we do that, we become distracted from the mission that Jesus has commissioned us to do. And that mission that Jesus has commissioned us to do is to announce the kingdom of God to all people. To announce the kingdom of God where all storms are calmed. The kingdom of God where all sins are forgiven. The kingdom of God where all our weediness is transformed into fruitfulness. Jesus' message was a message of hope. And it was not a naive hope, not a hope that ignored evil in the world, but a hope that God's power, God's kingdom will ultimately prevail. Here's a third little bit of good news, I think, in the gospel that we just heard, and that is God's in control. Jesus makes it clear, God is not worried in the least that the good he has planted will be threatened, choked off, or destroyed. God is in control, and God will bring goodness to completion. Even in Jesus' darkest hour, when the power of evil appeared to have triumphed, when Jesus died on the cross, God would have the last word, raising Jesus from the dead and reminding us that the goodness of God's kingdom will not be destroyed, but God will see to it that goodness triumphs. There's a story of a woman who was sitting in traffic waiting for, trying to make a left-hand turn and waiting for the traffic light to turn green. And, and when the traffic light did finally turn green, the man in the car in front of her did not realize that the traffic light had turned green. And she started honking on her horn and she started yelling obscenities at the man, and she started calling the man all kinds of nasty, terrible, no good, very bad names. And right at the last minute, the man looked up and noticed the light had changed when it was yellow, and he turned left and left her at the light to wait for the light to change again. And she sat there, and she stewed, and she was muttering under her breath, and a policeman came up and tapped on her window, instructed her to get her out, get out of her car, and said, ma'am, you are under arrest, handcuffed her, took her to the police station to be fingerprinted and booked. And while she was waiting to be booked, the police officer came back to her and apologized. And he told her, I I've made a terrible mistake. So said, when I pulled up behind you and, and saw your bumper sticker that said, follow me to Sunday school, and what would Jesus do? And then I heard all those obscenities and name calling and horn honking. He said, I just assumed that this car couldn't belong to you. It must be stolen. We cannot always tell the weeds from the wheat. 
when we make it our business to decide who is good and who is bad, we lose sight of Jesus' call for us to announce the kingdom where God is in control, where God will prevail, and to realize that we need not worry about that. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning on this seventh Sunday after Pentecost, you have fed us with your word. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us the strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Again, I can't thank you enough for for being with us this morning. Uh, I can't thank you enough for all that you're doing. And and I've repeated week after week, this is a terribly difficult time. But I thank you for the sacrifice that you are making. You are uh, showing that that you care deeply about uh, one another and our community by, you know, keeping social distance and wearing face coverings and, uh, and and, and uh, washing hands. Uh, we as a church have made a decision. It's just simply not safe to gather under the same roof at this time. Uh, we are very hopeful that that time will eventually come to an end, and we look forward to the day when we can all be back together. Uh, again, I can't thank you enough for your generosity, for all that you do. Please know that we're praying for you, and, and please keep us in your prayers as well. Uh, thank you. God bless you. God love you. And we'll see you again next week.